Hi and welcome to another photographycourse.net YouTube video. In this video I'd like to talk to you about low key lighting. If you're new to our channel and you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button and click on the bell icon so you can stay up to date when we release new videos. Low key lighting, it's also known as Rembrandt lighting sometimes, is where you've got a low main light source and a lot of dark shadow. High key lighting is quite the opposite where you've got really bright key lighting, that's your main light, and very few shadows. Low key lighting generates a very different mood than high key lighting. High key lighting is usually kind of light and fun, whereas low key lighting can be a lot more mysterious and sort of give a feeling of more drama or, or some tension. With a low key light setup, it's really as important to pay attention to what's happening in the shadow areas as it is to what your light is doing. And how you position your light, especially when you're photographing people, determines where the shadows will fall on their faces. And this will help shape the style of the image a lot. Typically you're working with one key light and no reflections and no other strong light sources. If you are working with other light sources or reflectors, you've got to be very careful about how they influence your subject, especially the shadow areas. You can use all sorts of light sources for low key lighting. For this video, we're using the light from a window coming into the room and that's all. And then just on this side of me, I'm blocking any other light coming in. You can also use flash or continuous like an LED or a fluorescent light to create low key lighting. Often when I do it, I'll have a softbox on my flash or my continuous light. If you're using a flash, it's more difficult to see where your shadows are falling. Continuous light makes that easier. And as you move a light around your subject, you can see where the shadows are falling and work those to your advantage. You can also use a bare flash or a bare bulb for a hard light that'll give a very strong edge to the shadow. And this can make an interesting low key light setup as well. This lighting technique dates back to the beginning of movies when black and white film was used and it was more challenging to get a very broad range of tone so they would light with a low key light that expose for the highlights and just let the shadows go dark. Now with digital photography where you've got so much more dynamic range it can be a bit more challenging to get your blacks to go really dark, so your shadow areas to be really moody. So during post-processing, when you're editing your photos, you need to work with your blacks and your contrast to ensure that the dark areas go really nice and rich black. When you're exposing, exposing for the highlight area is most important also. And if there's sufficient contrast, you might not need to post process so much. When you expose your images, take a spot meter reading from the bright area in the image. So expose for the highlights. This way your shadow areas will end up looking nice and dark. And as with any time you're trying something new, don't forget to experiment. Don't be afraid to try different things and figure out what you like yourself. This is where your style, where your creativity comes into play. Don't try and do it by some sort of set of rules, but just experiment. Try different aperture settings, try different shutter speed and aperture combinations. Play with your lighting, experiment with the light. If you're using a flash or a continuous light, move it in closer to your subject or move it further away from your subject. And also use flags, which are often just a black piece of card to influence the shadow areas and maybe block light that can be coming from another source. You can even bring a flag in very close to your subject's face so it's just out of frame to help shape the way the shadows look. So whatever concept you have in mind for a low key lighting setup, experiment and try different things until you're happy with the results. Don't forget to check out the article that I've written about this subject on photographycourse.net. I'll put a link in the description below.